ओम श्री गणेशाय नमः जय दुर्गा माँ दुर्गा सप्तशती इज अ हिंदू रिलीजियस टेक्स्ट डिस्क्राइबिंग द विक्ट्री ऑफ द गॉडेस दुर्गा ओवर द डेमन महिषासुर दुर्गा सप्तशती इज ऑल्सो नोन एज देवी महात्मा चंडी पाठ एंड कंटेन्स सेवन हंड्रेड वर्सेज अरेंज इन टू थर्टीन चैप्टर्स द फर्स्ट चैप्टर ऑफ दुर्गा सप्तशती इज बेस्ड ऑन द स्लेइंग ऑफ मधु एंड कैटअप प्रथमो अध्याय जय मा दुर्गा मेधा ऋषि नरेटिंग द स्टोरी ऑफ किलिंग ऑफ मधु कैटअब टू किंग सुरथ एंड समाधि वाइल डिस्क्राइबिंग द ग्रेटनेस ऑफ भगवती विनियोग द फर्स्ट चरित्र हैज सेज ब्रह्मा महाकाली डिटी गायत्री छंद नंद शक्ति रक्त दंतिका सीड अग्नि एलिमेंट एंड ऋग्वेद फॉर्म विनियोग इज डन इन द चैंडिंग ऑफ द फर्स्ट चरित्र टू प्लीज श्री महाकाली डिटी ध्यान आई वर्शिप महाकाली देवी हु वॉज प्रेस्ड बाय लोटस बॉर्न ब्रह्मा जी फॉर किलिंग मधु एंड कैटअब आफ्टर लॉर्ड विष्णु फेल ए स्लीप शी होल्ड्स अ स्वॉड डिस्कस मेस एरो बो पेरिथ ट्रिडेंट भूषंडी हेड एंड कॉन्च इन हर टेन हैंड्स शी हैज थ्री आईज शी इज अडॉन्ड विद डिवाइन ऑर्नामेंट्स ऑन ऑल हर बॉडी पार्ट्स द लस्टर ऑफ हर बॉडी इज लाइक दैट ऑफ सफायर एंड शी हैज टेन फेसिस एंड टेन लेग्स ओम सेल्यूटेशन टू गॉडस चंडिका मार्कंडे सेड आई एम टेलिंग यू इन डिटेल द स्टोरी ऑफ द बर्थ ऑफ सावर्णी द सन ऑफ द सन हु इज कॉल्ड द एर्थ मनु लिसन I am telling you the story of how the great Surya Kumar Savarni became the lord of the Manvantar by the grace of Bhagwati Mahamaya. It is a story of the past in the Swarochish Manvantar there was a king named Surat who was born in the Charitra dynasty. He had authority over the entire world. He used to take care of his subjects righteously as if they were his own sons. Yet at that time a Kshatriya named Kola with one C became his enemy. King Surat's policy of punishment was very strong. He fought with his enemies. Though the Kola with one Cs were less in number, yet King Surat was defeated by them. Then he returned to his city from the battlefield and started living as the king of his own country only. He had lost his authority over the entire earth. But even there, those powerful enemies attacked the great king Surat. the king's power had started to wane therefore his wicked powerful and evil minded minister seized the royal army and treasury even in his capital surat's authority had been destroyed therefore he rode his horse and went alone from there to a dense forest on the pretext of hunting there he saw the hermitage of the great brahmin medha muni where many violent creatures having given up their natural violent nature lived in utmost peace Many disciples of the sage were adding to the beauty of that forest. On reaching there, the sage welcomed him and he stayed for some time wandering here and there in the hermitage of that great sage. Then, attracted by affection, he started thinking like this: The same city which my ancestors had served in the past is devoid of me today. I don't know whether my wicked servants protected righteous righteously or not. who knows what pleasures my chief elephant who was always full of pride and valiant must be enjoying now under the control of the enemies those who always followed me because of my blessings wealth and food must be following other kings now my treasury which was accumulated with great difficulty will become empty because of the constant spending by those wasteful people king surat kept thinking about these and many other things continuously one day he saw a vaishya near the hermitage of Vipravar Medha and asked him brother who are you what is the reason for your coming here why do you look sad and distraught hearing these loving words of king surat the vaishya humbly bowed to him and said the vaishya said o king i am a vaishya born in a rich family my name is samadhi my wicked wife and sons have thrown me out of the house for out of the house for their greed i am deprived of wealth wife and sons my trusted relatives have taken my wealth and thrown me away that is why i have come to the forest in sorrow 
living here i do not know whether my sons wife and relatives are well or not are they living well at home at this time or are they in some trouble how are my sons are they virtuous or have they become wicked the king asked why do you have so much affection for those greedy wife and son who threw you out of your house for money the merchant said whatever you say about me is correct but what can i do my mind does not bear cruelty i have so much affection in my heart for those who in greed for money have abandoned my affection for my father my husband and my close ones and thrown me out of my house sir what is this that my mind is getting so filled with love for my relatives who lack qualities i am unable to understand this even after knowing it i am taking deep breaths for them and my heart is feeling very sad those people are completely devoid of love even then my mind is not able to be cruel towards them what should i do for this markande ji says o oh brahman thereafter surat the best of kings and that vaishya named samadhi both appeared together in the service of medha muni and behaved with him with due justice and politeness and sat down thereafter the vaishya and the king started some conversation the king said o oh lord i want to ask you one thing please tell me since my mind is not under my control that thing pains me a lot i still have attachment for the kingdom which has gone from my hands and all its parts o oh, great sage even though i know that it is not mine i feel sad for it like an ignorant person what is this this vaishya has also returned from his home insulted his sons wife and servants have abandoned him even though his relatives have abandoned him he still has a deep affection for them thus both he and i are very sad this way we are getting attracted to the object in which we have seen obvious faults o oh, fortunate one we both are intelligent yet what is this attachment that has developed in us like a person devoid of wisdom this foolishness is clearly visible in me and in him too o oh, fortunate one all living beings have the knowledge of the path of objects in the same way the objects are also different for everyone some beings do not see during the day and others do not see at night and there are some creatures who are who see equally during the day and night it is true that human beings are intelligent but they are not the only ones animals birds and deer etc are all intelligent beings the understanding of human beings is also like that of those deer and birds and as is the understanding of human beings so is that of those deer and birds this and other things are all also almost the same in both despite having understanding look at these birds even though they themselves are suffering from hunger out of love they are putting grains of food in the beaks of their children with great enthusiasm o best of men don't you see that despite being intelligent these human beings desire sons out of greed to get the reward for the favors they have done although they all do not lack understanding yet they have been thrown into the pit of attachment filled with the whirlpool of affection by the influence of bhagwati mahamaya who maintains the existence of the world the tradition of birth and death therefore there is no need to be surprised at this the world is being fascinated by bhagwati mahamaya who is the yog nidra form of jagdishwar shri lord vishnu Bhagwati Mahamaya forcibly pulls the mind of even the wise and makes them fascinated it is she who creates this entire animate and inanimate world and when she is pleased she gives boons to humans for liberation she is the eternal goddess who is the cause of paravidya world bondage and liberation and is also the presiding deity of all the gods the king asked bhagwan who is that goddess whom you call mahamaya brahman how did she appear and what are her characteristics maharishi the best among the knowns of uh, knowers of brahma i want to hear from your mouth what is the effect of that goddess what is her form and the way she appeared the sage said king in reality the goddess is eternal the entire universe is her form and she has pervaded the entire universe yet she appears in many forms listen to me about this although she is eternal and unborn yet when she appears to accomplish the work of the gods then she is said to have been born in the world at the end of the kalp when the entire universe was submerging in the ocean and the lord of all lord vishnu was sleeping on the bed of sheshnag 
taking shelter of Yognidra. At that time, two dreadful demons were born from the dirt of his ears, who were famous by the name of Madhu and Katab. Both of them got ready to kill Brahmaji. When Prajapati Brahmaji, seated in the navel of Lord Vishnu, saw those two dreadful demons coming to him and saw the Lord asleep, then, with a concentrated mind, he started praising Yognidra, who resides in the eyes of Sri Vishnu, to wake him up. Sri Brahma started praising the same goddess Nidra, who is the presiding deity of this universe, who holds the universe, who protects and destroys the universe, and who is the unique power of the radiant Lord Vishnu. Brahmaji said, Devi, you are Swaha, you are Swadha, and you are Vashtakar. The sound is also your form. You are the life-giving nectar. In the eternal syllable Pranav, you are present in the form of three vowels, A, U, Ma. Apart from these three vowels, the eternal half vowel in the form of a point, which cannot be pronounced specifically, is also you. Devi, you are Sandhya, Savitri and the Supreme Mother. Devi, you are the one who holds this universe. This world is created by you. It is maintained by you and is all, always you who swallow everything at the end of the cycle. Jaganmai Devi, at the time of cre creation of this world, you are the form of creation at the time of sustenance. You are the form of sustenance and at the time of the end of the cycle, you take the form of destruction. You are the form of Mahamoh, Mahadevi and Mahasuri. You are the nature of all that gives birth to the three gunas. You are also the fearful Kalratri, Maharatri and Mohratri. You are Shri. You are Ishwari, you are Hri, and you are the wisdom and intelligence. You are also modesty, nourishment, satisfaction, peace and forgiveness. You are the bearer of sword, spear, fierce form and the bearer of mace, discus, conch and bow. Arrow, Bhushundi and Parig are also your weapons. You are gentle and more gentle. Not only this, you are more beautiful than all the gentle and beautiful things. Above all, you are the Supreme Goddess who is beyond all, Goddess with all forms. Whatever things are there in the form of true and false and the power of all of them is you. In such a state, what praise can be offered to you? When you have put the God who creates, maintains and destroys this world under sleep, then who can be capable of praising you here? You gave me, Lord Shankar and Lord Vishnu, their bodies. You have provided shelter to the demons. Therefore, who has the power to praise you? Devi, you are praised for your benevolent influences. But these two fierce demons, Madhu and Katav in a trance, and awaken the Lord of the universe, Lord Vishnu, soon. Also, create in them the wisdom to kill these two great demons. The sage says, O king, when Brahmaji praised Yognidra, the presiding goddess of Tamogun, in this manner to awaken Lord Vishnu with the purpose of killing Madhu and Katav, then she emerged from the eyes, mouth, nose, arms, heart and chest of the Lord and stood before the side of the unmanifested Brahmaji. On being freed from Yognidra, Lord Janardhan, the Lord of the world, woke up from the bed of Sheshnag in the waters of that ocean. Then they saw those two demons. Those evil souls, Madhu and Katav, were very strong and valiant, and their eyes were red with anger, and they were trying to eat Brahmaji. Then Lord Sri Hari got up and fought with them only with their arms for 5000 years. Both of them were also going mad due to their extreme strength. Here, Mahamaya had also put them under illusion. That is why they started saying to Lord Vishnu, We are satisfied with your bravery, you ask for any boon from us. Sri Bhagwan said, If you both are pleased with me, then get killed by my hands. That is all I have asked for. What is there to take from any other boon here? The sage says, Being deceived in this way, when they saw water all over the world, they said to the lotus-eyed Lord, Where the earth is not submerged in water, where there is dry place, kill us there. The sage says, then saying, so be it, the Lord holding conch, discus and mace placed the heads of both of them on his thigh and cut them off with the discus. In this way, 
goddess mahamaya appeared on brahma's prayer now i will describe her effect to you again listen in this way in the devi mahatmaya under the story of the savarnik manvantar in the shri markande puran the first chapter named madhu katab vad is completed all those who are listening please say with me jai mata di jai mata di jai mata di om shri ganeshaya namaha jai ma durga the second chapter of durga saptashati is based on the slaughter of the armies of mahishasur dvitiyo adhyayah the appearance of the goddess by the might of the gods and the killing of mahishasur's army appropriation om is vishnu rishi of medium character mahalakshmi deity ushnik chhand shakambhari shakti durga beej vayu element and yajurved form it is used in the lesson of medium character for the happiness of shri mahalakshmi attention i worship the happy faced mahishasur mardani bhagwati mahalakshmi sitting on a lotus seat who holds in her hands a sword an ax a mace an arrow a thunderbolt a padma a bow a hook a rod power a sword a shield a conch a bell she wears a honey pot prong nose and chakra rishi says in the past there was a fierce war between the gods and the demons for a hundred years the king of the demons was mahishasur and the leader of the gods was indra in that war the army of the gods was defeated by the mighty demons after defeating all the gods mahishasur became indra then the defeated gods with the prajapati brahma in the lead went to the place where lord shankar and lord vishnu were seated the gods narrated in detail to the two lords the tale of mahishasur's valor and their own defeat they said o lord mahishasur has unsubbed the powers of the sun indra agni vayu moon yam varun and other gods and has himself become the ruler of all of them that evil minded mahish has expelled all the gods from heaven now they roam on the earth like human beings we have told you all about the misdeeds of the demons now we have come to your refuge think of some way to kill him hearing these words of the gods lord vishnu and shiva became very angry with the demons their eyebrows got stretched and their face became crooked then a great light appeared from the mouth of the extremely angry chakrapani shri vishnu similarly the bodies of brahma shankar and indra and the other gods also appeared in the same way a great radiance came out of the sky all of it merged into one that mass of great radiance appeared like a blazing mountain the gods saw that its flames were spreading in all directions there was no comparison to the radiance that emanated from the body when gathered together it transformed into a woman and appeared to pervade the three worlds with its light the radiance of the lord shankar made the face of the goddess appear the radiance of yamraj made hair grow on her head from the radiance of lord vishnu arms were born from the radiance of the moon her breasts were born from the radiance of indra her mid portion waist region was born from the radiance of varun her thighs and calves were born and from the radiance of the earth her buttocks were buttocks were born her feet were created from the brilliance of brahma and her fing- fingers from the brilliance of the sun the fingers of the hands were created from the brilliance of the vasus and the nose from the brilliance of kuber the teeth of the goddess were created from the brilliance of prajapati and her three eyes from the brilliance of agni had appeared her eyebrows were born from the effulgence of the evening sun and her ears from the effulgence of the wind similarly that auspicious goddess was manifested from the effulgence of other gods too thereafter the gods who were tormented by mahishasur became very happy on seeing the goddess who had appeared from the effulgence of all the gods lord shankar the bearer of pinak took out a spear from his trident and gave it to her then lord vishnu also produced a discus from his discus and offered it to bhagwati varun also presented a conch agni gave her strength and vayu gave her a bow the thousand eyed king of the gods indra produced a thunderbolt from his thunderbolt and gave her a bell which he took down from the eravat elephant yamraj gave her the punishment of death varun gave her the noose prajapati gave her a garland of crystals and brahma gave her a water pot 
द सन फिल्ड ऑल द पोर्स ऑफ द गॉडेस विद द ब्राइटनेस ऑफ इट्स रेज काल गेव हर अ शाइनिंग शील्ड एंड अ स्वॉर्ड क्षीर सागर प्रजेंटेड अ रेडियंट नेकलेस एंड टू डिवाइन गारमेंट्स विच वुड नेवर वियर आउट ही ऑल्सो प्रजेंटेड अ डिवाइन चूड़ा मणि टू इयर रिंग्स बैंगल्स एंड अ रेडियंट हाफ मून ब्रेसलेट्स फॉर ऑल द आर्म्स एंकलेट्स फॉर बोथ फीट एंड अ ब्यूटिफुल कॉलर एंड अ नेकलेस ही ऑल्सो गिव हर रिंग्स मेड ऑफ जेम्स टू वियर ऑन ऑल हर फिंगर्स विश्वकर्मा प्रजेंटेड हर विद अ वेरी प्योर एक्ट्स He also gave her many types of weapons and an impenetrable armor. Apart from these, a ring made of gems that would never wither, to be borne on the head and the chest. Gave her garlands of lotuses. The ocean offered her a beautiful lotus flower. The Himalayas offered her a loin to ride and various kinds of gems. The treasure keeper Kubir offered her a betel pot. filled with honey and the king of all the serpents shesh who holds the earth offered her a betel pot filled with honey presented her with a snake necklace adorned with precious gems similarly other gods also honored the goddess by giving her ornaments and weapons after that they roared loudly with laughter repeatedly the entire sky echoed with their terrifying sound devi the roar of that loin could not be contained anywhere the sky seemed small in front of it it echoed so loudly that the whole world was shaken and the oceans trembled the earth started shaking and all the mountains started moving at that time the god said to bhavani with great happiness devi victory to you seeing the entire world in turmoil the demons suddenly stood up adorning their entire army with armor etc and taking weapons in their hands at that time mahishasur became very angry and said ah oh, what is happening then he was surrounded by all the demons aiming at that roar he ran and on reaching ahead he saw the goddess who was illuminating the three worlds with her radiance along with that the great sages humbly praised her with devotion the earth was being pressed down by the weight of her feet the crown on her forehead was drawing a line in the sky and she was disturbing the seven nether worlds with the sound of her bow the goddess was standing covering all directions with her thousands of arms thereafter a war broke out between the demons and her all directions were illuminated by the attack of various types of weapons a great demon named chikshur was the commander of mahishasur he started fighting with the goddess Chamar also started fighting with the four armed army of other demons a great demon named Udgr came with 60000 charioteers and fought a demon named Mahanu Mahahanu started fighting with 1 crore charioteers a great demon named Asiloma whose hair was as sharp as a sword came to the battle with 5 crore charioteers a demon named Bhashkal surrounded by 60 lakh charioteers also started fighting in that battlefield a demon named parivrit started fighting with many groups of elephant riders and horsemen and an army of 1 crore charioteers a demon named bidal surrounded by 5 billion charioteers started fighting apart from these thousands of other great demons with their armies of chariots elephants and horses started fighting with the goddess Mahishasur himself was standing in that battlefield surrounded by an army of crores of chariots elephants and horses those demons were fighting with the goddess by attacking her with weapons like tomar bhindipal shakti pestle sword axe and patties some some demons attacked her with shakti some threw noose and some other demons tried to kill the goddess by attacking her with sword the goddess also filled with anger and cut all those weapons of the demons by showering her weapons in a playful manner there was not even the slightest sign of exertion or fatigue on her face gods and sages were praising her and she the goddess kept showering weapons on the bodies of the demons the loin the vehicle of the goddess also filled with anger started moving in the army of demons shaking the hair on its neck as if a forest fire was spreading in the forest all the breaths 
that Devi Ambika exhaled while fighting with the demons on the battlefield immediately appeared in the form of hundreds and thousands of ganas and started fighting the demons with weapons like parshu bhindipal khadag and pattish those ganas strengthened by the power of the devi started playing the instruments like drums and conches while destroying the demons many ganas were playing the mridang in that battle festival thereafter the devi killed hundreds of great demons with her trident mace shower of power and sword etc many were killed by making them unconscious with the dreadful sound of the bell many demons were tied with noose and dragged on the ground many demons were cut into two pieces by the blows of her sharp sword many fell to the ground after being wounded by the blows of the mace many were badly hurt by the blows of the pestle and started vomiting blood some demons fell to the ground because their chests were torn apart by the spears many demons lost their backs in that battleground due to the shower of arrows the demons who were swooping down like eagles lost their limbs some had their arms torn apart some had their necks cut off many demons heads started falling off some people's bodies were torn apart in the middle many great demons fell to the ground because their thighs were cut off the goddess cut many into two pieces leaving them with one arm one leg and one eye many demons even after their heads were cut off would get up again and fight with the goddess in the form of only a torso holding good weapons in their hands other kabans would dance to the rhythm of the battle drums many headless torsos would run with swords spears and spears in their hands and other great demons would challenge the goddess to battle saying wait wait the ground where that fierce battle took place was so covered with the bodies of the fallen chariots of the goddess elephants horses and demons that it had become impossible to walk there There was so much bloodshed from the bodies of elephants horses and demons in the army of demons that in a short time large rivers of blood started flowing there Jagdamba destroyed the huge army of demons in a moment just as fire reduces a huge pile of grass and wood to ashes in a few moments and that loin shaking its hair on its neck and roaring loudly seemed to snatch away the life from the bodies of the demons there the followers of the goddess also fought with those great demons in such a way that the gods standing in the sky were very pleased and started showering flowers on them thus the second chapter of devi mahatmay under the story of savarnik manvantar in shri markande puran titled killing of mahishasur's army is completed all those who are listening with me please say jay mata di jay mata di jay mata di ओम श्री गणेशाय नमः जय दुर्गा माँ दुर्गा सप्तशती तृतीय अध्याय किलिंग ऑफ महिषासुर अलोंग विद हिज जनरल्स मेडिटेशन द लस्टर ऑफ जगदम्बाज लिम्स इज लाइक दैट ऑफ थाउजेंड्स ऑफ सन्स एट सनराइज शी इज वेरिंग अ रेड सिल्क साड़ी अ गार्लैंड ऑफ स्कल्स एडॉन्स हर नेक शी होल्ड्स इन हर हैंड्स अ गार्लैंड ऑफ गार्लैंड विद्या अभय एंड द मुद्रास ऑफ वर हर थ्री आइज look very beautiful her head is adorned with a jeweled crown along with the moon and she is seated on a lotus seat i offer my obeisance to such a goddess with devotion the sage says seeing the army of demons being destroyed in this way the great demon commander chikshur filled with rage advanced to fight with ambika devi that demon began to shower arrows on the goddess on the battlefield as if a cloud was pouring a torrent of water on the peak of mount meru then the goddess effortlessly cut off his group of arrows with her arrows and killed his horses and charioteer as well along with that she also cut off his bow and his very high flag in an instant after the bow was cut she pierced his limbs with her arrows after the bow chariot horses and charioteer were destroyed the demon ran towards the goddess with shield and sword after striking the head of the loin with his sharp sword he also struck the left arm of the goddess with great force o king the sword broke as soon as it reached the goddess's arm then the demon took the spear in his hand with his eyes turning red with anger and the great demon hurled it at bhagwati bhadrakali the spear blazed with its brilliance like the sun falling from the sky Seeing the spear coming towards her the goddess also attacked with the spear the demon spear broke into hundreds of pieces the great demon chikshur was also bo- blown to pieces he lost his life 
When the mighty Chikshur, the commander of Mahishasur's army, was killed, Chamar, who tormented the gods, came riding on an elephant. He also attacked the goddess with his Shakti, but Jagdamba injured and neutralized him with her roar and immediately dropped him on the earth. Seeing the Shakti broken and fallen, Chamar became very angry. Now he threw a spear, but the goddess cut it down with her arrows. Meanwhile, the goddess loin jumped up on the elephant's head and began to grapple with the demon with great force. While fighting, both of them fell down from the elephant to the earth and, filled with great anger, began to fight, hurling ferocious blows at each other. Thereafter, the loin leaped towards the sky with great force and, while falling, fr while falling from there, severed Chamar's head from the body with its claws. In the same manner, Udgr, after being struck by rocks and chests, was killed by the goddess' hands on the battlefield. Karal also fell down with the blows of teeth, fists and slaps. The goddess, filled with anger, crushed Uddhat with, with her mace. Bhindipal killed Vashkal and Tamar and Andhak with his arrows. The three-eyed Parmeshwari killed the demons Ugrasse, Ugravir and Mahahanu with her trident. With a blow of the sword, she severed the head of Vidal from his body. Durdhar and Durmuk, both of them were also sent to Yamlok with her arrows. Seeing his army being destroyed in this way, Mahishasa took the form of a buffalo and started harassing the followers of the goddess. Some were killed by his snout, some by his hoofs, some by his tail, some by his horns, some by his horns, some by his speed, some by his roar, some by his whirling, and some by his breath and air. He made them fall down. After thus defeating the army of his Ganas, the demon pounced to kill the loin of Mahadevi. This made Jagdamba very angry. On the other side, the mighty Mahishasur also filled with anger started digging the earth with his hooves and lifting and throwing high mountains with his horns and started roaring. Due to his whirling, the earth became agitated and started cracking. The sea started submerging the earth from all sides by hitting his tail. The clouds were torn to pieces by the blows of his moving horns. Hundreds of mountains, blown by the force of his breath, fell from the sky. Seeing that great demon coming towards her in this manner, filled with rage, Chandika became very angry to kill him. She threw, she threw her noose and bound that great demon. Caught in that great battle, he gave up the form of a buffalo. And immediately, he appeared in the form of a loin. In that state, as soon as Jagdamba prepared to cut off his head, he appeared as a man holding a sword. Then the goddess immediately showered arrows and pierced that man with shield and sword. In the meantime, he was transformed into a great elephant. He then rode and pulled the huge loin of the goddess with his trunk. While pulling, began, while pulling it, the goddess cut off his trunk with her sword. Then the great demon again assumed the form of a buffalo and as before began tormenting the three worlds including all living and non-living creatures. Then the mother of the world, Chandika, filled with anger, began drinking the best of honey again and again and began laughing with her eyes red. On the other hand, the demon, intoxicated with power and valor, began roaring and began throwing mountains at Chandi with his horns. At that time, the goddess spoke while crushing the mountains thrown by him with her clusters of arrows. While speaking, her face was turning red with the intoxication of honey and her voice was faltering. The goddess said, O oh fool, while I drink the honey, roar for a moment. If you die here at my hands, soon the gods will also, also roar. The sage says, Saying this, the goddess jumped and climbed upon that great demon. Then pressing him with her foot, she struck his throat with a spear. Even though pressed by her foot, Mahishasur started coming out of her mouth in another form. He had just come out with half of his body when the goddess stopped him with her power. Even though half of his body had come out, that great demon started fighting with the goddess. Then the goddess cut off his head with a very big sword. Then the entire army of demons fled away, making a hue and cry, and all the gods became very happy. The gods, along with the divine sages, praised Goddess Durga. The Gandharva king started singing and the Apsaras started dancing. Thus, in the story of the Savarnik Manvantar in the Sri Markande Puran, the third chapter named Mahishasur Vad in the Devi Mahatmaya is completed. All those who are listening, please say with me. 
जय माँ दुर्गा जय माँ दुर्गा जय माँ दुर्गा ओम श्री गणेशाय नमः जय माता दी जय दुर्गा माँ द फोर्थ चैप्टर ऑफ दुर्गा सप्तशती इज बेस्ड ऑन देवी स्तुति फोर्थ चैप्टर प्रेज ऑफ द गॉड एज बाय द गॉड्स लाइक इंद्र मेडिटेशन मेडिटेशन शुड बी मेडिटेटेड अपॉन द गॉड एज दुर्गा नेम्ड जया हु इज सर्व बाय द मैन हु डिजायर सक्सेस एंड हु इज सराउंडेड बाय द गॉड्स फ्रॉम ऑल साइड्स द ऑर ऑफ हर लिम्स इज dark like a black cloud she instills fear in the enemy with her sarcasm the line of the moon on her forehead looks beautiful she holds a conch discus a sword and a trident in her hands she has three eyes she is seated on the shoulder of a lion and is filling the three worlds with her brilliance the sages say when the extremely powerful demon mahishasur and his army of demons were killed by the goddess indra and other gods bowed their necks and shoulders to pay their respects and started praising goddess durga in excellent words at that time their beautiful body parts were thrilled with joy the god said we offer our respectful obeisances to the goddess jagdamba who is worshiped by all the goddesses and sages who is worshiped by all the gods and sages whose form is the confluence of the power of all the gods and who has pervaded the entire universe with her power may she bless us even lord sheshnag brahma and mahadev are not able to describe the matchless power and strength of goddess chandika who should think of protecting the entire universe and destroying the fever fear of evil we salute you bhagwati durga who resides in the houses of pious souls as lakshmi in the house of sinners as poverty in the hearts of men with pure conscience as wisdom in the hearts of noble men as faith and in the hearts of noble men as modesty goddess you protect the entire universe goddess how do we describe your inconceivable form your great prowess in destroying demons and your wonderful character displayed in the war in front of all gods and demons you are the cause of the creation of the entire universe satvagun rajogun and tamogun all these three gunas are present in you yet you do not seem to have any association with the defects even gods like lord vishnu and mahadev ji cannot cross you you are the shelter of everyone this entire universe is a part of you because you are the original uncreated para prakriti of all goddess in all the sacrifices you are swaha whose pronunciation satisfies all the gods apart from this you are also the reason for the satisfaction of the ancestors therefore everyone also calls you swadha devi you are the means to attain salvation who is the form of inconceivable mahavrat who is free from all defects who have controlled the senses who consider the tattva as the essence and who is practiced by the sages who desire salvation that bhagwati para vidya is you you are the form of words you are the basis of the very pure rigved yajurved and samved which is accompanied by the recitation of the beautiful verses of the udgeet you are devi trai three vedas and bhagwati and dot with six opulences for the creation and maintenance of this world you have appeared in the form of vartha farming and livelihood you are the destroyer of the great sufferings of the entire universe devi you are the power of wisdom which gives the knowledge of the essence of all the scriptures you are the goddess durga in the form of a boat which takes us across the difficult ocean of existence you are not attached to anything you are the goddess lakshmi who resides solely in the chest of shri vishnu the enemy of katab and you are the goddess gauri who is respected by lord chandrashekhar your face is adorned with a gentle smile is pure imitates the image of the full moon and is beautiful with the lovely luster of pure gold yet on seeing you mahishasur became angry and suddenly attacked you this is a matter of great surprise devi when that face became red like the rising moon due to anger and became fierce due to the stretched eyebrows then seeing that mahishasur did not die immediately it is a matter of even more surprise because who can survive after seeing the angry yamraj devi may you be pleased O embodiment of the supreme being when you are pleased the world prospers and when you are filled with anger you destroy so many families instantly this thing has been experienced now because this huge army of mahishasur has been destroyed in a moment due to your anger 
those on whom you who always bestow prosperity are pleased they are respected in the country they get wealth and fame their religion never weakens and they are considered blessed with their healthy wives sons and servants devi by your grace a virtuous man performs all kinds of religious deeds with utmost devotion every day and goes to heaven due to its effect therefore you are certainly the bestower of desired results in all the three worlds ma durga you take away the fear of all creatures when remembered and when healthy men contemplate on you you give them wisdom that brings utmost welfare goddess who removes sorrow poverty and fear who else other than you whose mind is always compassionate to do good to all goddess by killing these demons the world should get happiness and these demons even if they have been committing sins to stay in hell for a long time should die in the battle and go to heaven thinking this you certainly kill the enemies why do you attack the enemies with weapons why do you not destroy all the demons with just a glance there is a mystery in this may these enemies also become purified by our weapons and go to the better worlds in this way your thoughts towards them also remain very good the fierce radiance of the sword the reason why the eyes of the demons did not burst due to the intense radiance of the tip of your trident was that they were seeing your beautiful face which gives joy like the moon with beautiful rays devi your modesty removes the bad behavior of the wicked also this form is is such that it can never be imagined and which can never be compared with others and your strength and valor destroy even those demons who had once destroyed the valor of the gods in this way you have shown your mercy even on the enemies o boon giver devi with whom can your valor be compared and where else can we find such a form which frightens the enemies and is extremely beautiful except yours kindness in the heart and ruthlessness in battle these two qualities have been seen only in you in all the three worlds mother you have protected this entire triloki by destroying the enemies you have killed those enemies on the battlefield and sent them to heaven and have also dispelled our fears caused by the maddened demons we salute you goddess please protect us from the trident ambika please protect us from the sword and also from the sound of the bell and the twirling of the bow chandika please protect us in the east west and south directions and ishwari by swinging your trident you protect us in the north direction also please protect us and this earth with your extremely beautiful and extremely fearsome forms which keep roaming in the three worlds ambika protect us from all sides with all the weapons like sword spear and mace etc that adorn your hands the sage says in this way when the gods praised jagannatha durga and worshiped her with divine flowers and perfumes and sandalwood etc from nandanvan forest then when all of them together offered the fragrance of divine incense with devotion then the goddess bowed down with a happy face and said to all the gods the goddess said gods all of you ask me for whatever you desire the god said bhagwati has fulfilled all our wishes now nothing is left because our enemy mahishasur has been killed maheshwari even after all this if you want to give us more boons then whenever we remember you you should appear before us and remove our great troubles and happy faced ambika the person who praises you with these hymns besides giving him wealth prosperity and splendor you should always remain pleased with us to increase his wealth and wealth like women etc the sage says king when the gods pleased bhadrakali devi in this way for their own and the world's welfare then she disappeared there saying tathastu king in this way i have told you the whole story of how the goddess who wanted a, who wanted the welfare of the three worlds appeared from the bodies of the gods in the past now hear from me the whole incident of how the goddess who was helpful to the gods had appeared from the body of gauri devi to kill the evil demons and shumbhnishum and to protect all the worlds i describe it to you exactly in this way the fourth chapter named Shakra Dishtuti in Devi Mahatmya under the story of Savarnik Manvantar in Sri Markande Puran is completed. All those who are listening, please say with me, Jai Mata Di, 
जय माता दी जय माता दी ओम श्री गणेशाय नमः जय माता दी जय दुर्गा माँ द फिफ्थ चैप्टर ऑफ दुर्गा सप्तशती इज बेस्ड ऑन देवीज कन्वर्सेशन विद द मैसेंजर पंचमो अध्याय प्रेज ऑफ द गॉड इज बाय द गॉड्स शुम्ब सेंडिंग अ मैसेंजर टू अंबिका आफ्टर हियरिंग द प्रेज ऑफ हर ब्यूटी फ्रॉम चंडमुंड एंड द मैसेंजर रिटर्निंग डिसअपॉइंटेड अपनी योग ओम इन दिस उत्तरा चरित्र रुद्र इज द सेज महेश महासरस्वती इज द डीएटी अनुष्टुप इज द मीटर भीम इज द पावर ब्रह्मरी इज द सीड सन इज द एलिमेंट एंड सामवेद इज द फॉर्म इट इज यूज इन द रिसाइटेशन ऑफ उत्तर चरित्र टू प्लीज महासरस्वती ध्यान आई कंटिन्यूसली वर्शिप द गॉड एस महासरस्वती हु होल्ड्स इन हर हैंड्स द बेल्ट स्पियर प्लो कॉन्च पेसल डिस्कस बो एंड एरो whose radiance is like the beautiful moon of autumn who is the foundation of the three worlds and destroyer of demons like shumb and who was born from the body of gauri the sage says in the past the demons named shumb and nishumb in their pride of their power snatched the kingdom of the three worlds and the share of sacrifices from the hands of indra the husband of sachi they both started using the authority of the sun moon kuber yam and varun they also started doing the work of the wind and fire both of them humiliated dethroned defeated and deprived all the gods of their authority and expelled them from the heaven despised by those two great demos the gods remembered aprajita devi and thought jagdamba had given us a boon that if i remember her in times of trouble i will immediately destroy all your objections thinking this god giriraj went to the himalayas and started praising goddess vishnu maya there god said salutations to the goddess always salutations to mahadevi shiva salute to nature and bhadra we salute jagdamba regularly salutations to rudra repeated salutations to nitya gauri and dhatri continuous salutations to goddess jyotsnamai chandra rupini and sukswarupa we repeatedly salute vriddhi and siddhi rupa devi who grants welfare to the devotees salutations again and again to you jagdamba who is in the form of narati lakshmi of demons lakshmi of kings and sharvani wife of shiva salutations always to durga durga para one who takes one across difficult difficulties sara the essence of all sarva karini khyati krishna and dhumra devi we salute the goddess who is extremely gentle and extremely fierce we salute her again and again salutations again and again to the goddess who is the foundation of the universe the goddess who is called vishnu maya in all beings salutations to her salutations to her again and again the goddess who is called consciousness in all beings salutations to her salutations to her again and again to the goddess who is situated in all beings in the form of intelligence salutations to her salutations to her salutations to her again and again to the goddess who is situated in all beings in the form of sleep salutations to her salutations to her salutations to her again and again to the goddess who is situated in all beings in the form of hunger salutations to her salutations to her salutations to her again and again to the goddess who is situated in all beings in the form of shadow salutations to her salutations to her salutations to her again and again to the goddess who is situated in all beings in the form of power salutations to her salutations to her salutations to her again and again to the goddess who is situated in all beings in the form of desire salutations to her salutations to her salutations to her again and again to that goddess who is situated in the form of peace forgiveness salutations to her salutations to her salutations to her again and again to that goddess who is situated in the form of caste in all beings salutations to her salutations to her salutations to her again and again to that goddess who is situated in the form of modesty in all beings salutations to her salutations to her salutations to her again and again to that goddess who who is situated in the form of peace in all beings salutations to her salutations to her salutations to her again and again to the goddess who is situated in the form of faith in all beings salutations to her salutations to her salutations to her again and again to the goddess who is situated in the form of radiance in all beings salutations to her salutations to her salutations to her again and again 
to the goddess who is situated in the form of Lakshmi and all beings. Salutations to her, salutations to her, salutations to her again and again. To the goddess who is situated in the form of attitude in all beings. Salutations to her, salutations to her, salutations to her again and again. To the goddess who is situated in the form of memory in all beings. Salutations to her, salutations to her, salutations to her again and again. To the goddess who is situated in the form of mercy in all beings. Salutations to her, salutations to her, salutations to her again and again. To the goddess who is situated in the form of contentment in all beings. Salutations to her, salutations to her, salutations to her again and again. Salutations to the goddess who resides in all beings in the form of a mother. Salutations to her, salutations to her, salutations to her again and again. Salutations to the goddess who resides in all beings in the form of illusion. Salutations to her, salutations to her, salutations to her again and again. Salutations to the goddess who is the presiding deity of the senses of the living beings and who is always present in all beings. Salutations to that Vyapti Devi again and again. Salutations to the goddess who resides in the form of consciousness pervading this entire universe. Salutations to her, salutations to her again and again. May that goddess who is the means of welfare bless us with welfare and destroy all our difficulties. We, the gods, who are harassed by the arrogant demons, are now offering our obeisances to the goddess and who, when remembered with devotion by humble men, instantly destroys all calamities. May that goddess Jagdamba elevate our troubles. The sage says, O king, when the gods were thus praying, Goddess Parvati came there to take a bath in the water of river Ganga. The goddess, with beautiful eyebrows, asked the gods, Whom do you all pray here? Then goddess Shiva, who appeared from her own body, from her own body said, All these gods who have gathered here after being insulted by the demon Shumb and defeated by Nishumb in the war are praying me only. Ambika was born from the body of Parvati ji. Therefore, she is known as Kaushiki in all the worlds. After the appearance of Kaushiki, the body of goddess Parvati became black. Hence, she became famous by the name of Kalika Devi, who lives on the Himalayas. Thereafter, Chandmund, the servants of Shumb Nishumb, came there and saw Ambika Devi, who had assumed a very beautiful form. Then they went to Shumb and said, Maharaj, there is a very beautiful woman who is illuminating the Himalayas with her divine radiance. No one has ever seen such a beautiful form. O Demon Lord! Find out who that goddess is and take her. She is a gem among women. Every part of her body is very beautiful and she is spreading light in all directions with the radiance of her body parts. O demon king, right now she is present on the Himalayas. You can see her. Lord, all the gems like gems, elephants and horses etc. in the three worlds, they all look beautiful in your house at this time. Among the elephants, Eravat, the gem-like being, this Parijat tree and this Uchai Shrava horse, all these you have taken from Indra, this plane drawn by swans and also looks beautiful in your courtyard. This wonderful plane made by gems, which was earlier with Brahmaji, has now been brought to you. You have snatched this treasure called Mahapadma from Kubir. The ocean has also presented you with a garland called Kinjalkini, which is decorated with saffron and whose lotuses never wither. Varuna's umbrella that showers gold also looks beautiful in your house and this excellent chariot which was earlier in the possession of Prajapati is now with you. O demon lord, you have also snatched the power of death called Utkrantida. Varuna's nose and all kinds of gems found in the ocean are in the possession of your brother Nishumb. Agni has also offered two clothes, purified by himself to you. O king of demons, in this way you have collected all the gems. Then why don't you take this auspicious goddess who is like a gem among women under your control? Rishi says, on hearing these words of Chandmund, Shumb sent the great demon Sugriv as his messenger to the goddess and said, With my permission, Tell her these things and do something so that she gets pleased and comes here soon. The messenger went to the very beautiful region of the mountain where the goddess was present and spoke soft words in a sweet voice. The messenger said, Goddess, Demon King Shumb is the supreme god of the three worlds at this time. I am his messenger and have come here to you. All the gods always obey his orders unanimously. No one can violate them. 
he has defeated all the gods listen to the message he has given for you the entire triloki is under my control even the gods follow my command i enjoy the portions of all sacrifices separately all the best gems in the three worlds are in my control i have snatched away eravad the vehicle of devraj indra which is like a gem among elephants the horse gem uchchhrava which was produced by churning the ocean of milk has been offered by the gods by by falling at my feet beautiful lady besides these all the other gems that the gods gandharvas and serpents had have come to me goddess we consider you a gem among the women of the world so you come to us because we are the ones who enjoy the gems beautiful lady with playful glances come to serve me or my brother the mighty nishumb because you are of the form of gem by choosing me you will attain great prosperity beyond comparison thinking this in your mind you should become my wife the sage said on hearing the messenger say this the auspicious goddess durga who holds this universe smiled in her heart with a serious attitude and said the goddess said messenger you have spoken the truth there is not even an iota of falsehood in it shumb is the lord of the three worlds and nishumb is also as powerful as him but how can i make a promise false in this matter listen to the promise i have already made due to my limited intelligence whoever defeats me in a battle who shatters my pride and who is as strong as me in this world he will be my master therefore shumb or the great demon nishumb should come here themselves conquer me and marry me as soon as possible why is there any need to delay in this the messenger said devi you are full of pride do not say such things in front of me who is the man in the three worlds who can stand in front of shumb nishumb Devi all the gods cannot stand in front of other demons in a battle then how can you alone being a woman how will you being a woman go in front of demons like shumb etc against whom even indra and other gods could not stand in battle therefore you should go to shumb and nishumb on my saying by doing this your pride will be protected otherwise when they will drag you by your hair then you will have to go losing your prestige the goddess said what you are saying is right shumb is strong and nishumb is also very brave but what should i do i have taken this vow without thinking so now you go tell everything that i have told you respectfully to the king of demons then he may do whatever he deems fit thus in the shri markande puran under the story of the savarnik manvantar in the devi mahatmay the fifth chapter named devi dooth samvad is completed All those who are listening please say with me Jai Mata Di Jai Mata Di Jai Mata Di Om Shri Ganeshaya Namaha Jai Durga Ma Jai Mata Di The sixth chapter of Durga Saptashati is based on the slaying of Dhumralochan Sixth Adhyaya Slaying of Dhumralochan Meditation I contemplate the supreme goddess Padmavati who resides in the lap of the omniscient Bhairav she is seated on the throne of the king of snakes her body is illuminated by a huge garland of gems adorning the hoods of the snakes her radiance is like that of the sun her three eyes enhance her beauty she is holding a garland a pitcher a skull and a lotus in her hands and a crown of half moon is adorned on her head the sage says Hearing this statement of the goddess the messenger became very angry and went to the demon king and told him all the news in detail hearing the words uh, hearing the words of the messenger the demon king became enraged and spoke to the demon commander dhumralochan dhumralochan you should quickly take your army with you and drag that wicked woman by her hair and bring her here forcefully if anyone else is standing to protect her be it a god a yaksh or gandharv you must kill him the sage says on shumb's order the demon dhumralochan left the place immediately with an army of 60000 demons on reaching there he saw the goddess living on the himalayas and challenged her saying hey you go to the shumb nishum if you do not come to my master happily right now then i will forcibly drag you by your hair and take you there the goddess said you have been sent by the king of demons you yourself are strong and you have a huge army with you in such a state if you take me away by force what can i do to you the sage says at the goddess saying this the demon dhumralochan ran towards her 
then ambika reduced him to ashes by merely uttering the word hum then the huge army of demons filled with rage and ambika showered each other with sharp arrows spears and axes meanwhile the goddess vehicle the loin filled with rage rode terribly and jumped into the army of demons shaking the hair on its neck he killed some demons with his claws some with his jaws and many great demons by throwing them down and wounding them with the teeth on his lips that loin tore apart the stomachs of some with its claws and beheaded some by slapping them it cut off the arms and heads of some others and shaking the hair on its neck it tore apart the stomachs of other demons and sucked their blood filled with great anger that mighty loin the vehicle of the goddess destroyed the entire army of demons in a moment when shumbh heard that the goddess had killed the demon dhumralochan and that her loin had destroyed the entire army the demon king became very angry his lips started trembling he ordered two great demons named chand and mund o chand and o mund you all go there with a large army catch hold of the hair of that goddess or tie her up and bring her here quickly if there is any doubt in bringing him in this manner then kill her in battle using all kinds of weapons and the entire demon army after that wicked woman is killed and the loin is also killed tie up ambika and return soon with her in this way in the story of the savarnik manvantar in the shri markande puran in the devi mahatmay the sixth chapter named dhumralochan vad is completed all those who are listening please stay with me jay mata di jay mata di jay mata di om shri ganeshaya namaha jay durga ma jay mata di the seventh chapter of durga saptashati is based on the slaying of chand and mund saptamo adhyaya killing of chand and mund meditation i meditate on goddess matangi she is sitting on a throne studded with gems and listening to the sweet sound of a parrot while reading her complexion is dark she has placed one of her feet on a lotus she wears a half moon on her head and plays the veena while wearing a garland of kahlar flowers she is wearing a red colored sari and is holding a shankha bhai vessel in her hand There seems to be a slight effect of honey on her face and a bindi on her forehead looks beautiful. The sage says thereafter after getting the permission of Shumbh the demons like Chand Mund etc set out with their fourfold army equipped with weapons then reaching the golden peak of the Himalayas he saw the goddess sitting on a loin she was smiling softly seeing her the demons started trying to catch her quickly some drew their bows some took up their swords and some people came and stood near the goddess then ambika became very angry with those enemies at that time her face turned black due to anger the eyebrows on her forehead became crooked and from there immediately appeared the fierce faced kali who was holding a sword and noose she was wearing a strange khat wang and a sari made of leopard skin and was adorned with a garland of human heads the flesh of her body had dried up there was only a skeleton of bones due to which she looked very scary her face was very large and due to her lolling tongue she looked even more scary her eyes were sunken and slightly red she was echoing in all directions with her terrifying roar killing big demons goddess kalika attacked the army of demons with great speed and started devouring them all she would catch the side guards the mahouts holding the hook the warriors and many elephants with their bells with a single hand and put them in her mouth similarly she would put the horses chariots and charioteers along with the charioteer soldiers in her mouth and chew them in a terrifying manner she would catch some by the hair strangle some crush some with her feet and kill some by knocking them down with a blow of her chest she would catch the big weapons released by the demons in her mouth and filled with rage would grind them with her teeth kali trampled and devoured the entire army of powerful and evil demons and drove them away some were killed by swords some by khatwangs and many were crushed to death by the front part of her teeth thus the goddess killed the entire army of demons in a moment seeing this chand ran towards the terrifying kali the great demon mund also covered the terrifying goddess with a shower of arrows and discus rounds 
fired thousands of times. The many discus entering the goddess mouth seemed as if many circles of the sun were entering the belly of the clouds. Then the terrifying roar, roaring Kali laughed horribly in rage. At that time, their teeth, her teeth, which was which were barely visible inside her fierce faces, appeared extremely bright. The goddess took a huge sword in her hand and uttering hum attacked Chand and grabbing his hair, cut off his head with the same sword. Seeing Chand killed, Mund also ran towards the goddess. Then filled with anger, the goddess wounded him with her sword and made him lie down on the ground. Seeing the mighty Chand and Mund killed, the rest of the army that had survived fled in all directions in fear. Thereafter, Kali took the heads of Chand and Mund in her hand and went to Chandika and laughingly loudly said, Goddess, I have presented to you these two great animals named Chand and Mund. Now in the war sacrifice, you yourself should kill Shumbhannishumb. The sage says, seeing those great demons named Chand Mund brought there, the auspicious Chandi said to Kali in a, seat, in a sweet voice, Devi, you have come to me with, with Chand and Mund. Therefore, you will be famous in the world by the name of Chamunda. Thus, in the Devi Mahatmaya, under the story of Savandik Manvantar in the Sri Markande Puran, the seventh chapter named Chand Mund Vad is completed. All those who are listening, please say with me, Jai Mata Di, Jai Mata Di, Jai Mata Di. Om Sri Ganeshai Namaha, Jai Mata Di, Jai Durga Ma. The eighth chapter of Durga Saptashati is based on the slaying of Rakta Beej. Ashtamo Adhyayaha, Killing of Rakta Beej. Meditation. I meditate on Bhavani, who is covered with rays of anima and other siddhima. Her body is red in color, her eyes are full of compassion, and her hands are adorned with noose, hook, arrow, and bow. The sage says, After the demons named Chand and Mund were killed and a large army was annihilated, the mighty king of demons, Shumbh, became very angry and ordered the entire army of demons to march for the war. He said, Today, the 86 demon commanders named Udayudh should set out for the war with their armies. The 84 commanders of the demons named Kambu should travel surrounded by their armies. The 50 Kotivire clan and 100 Dhomra clan demons should march with their armies at my command. The Kalak Dorhrud Morre and Kalkea demons should also prepare for the war and depart immediately at my command. The fearful king of demons, Shumb, gave these orders and set out for the war with thousands of large armies. Seeing his extremely fearsome army approaching, Chandika made the earth and sky resound with the twang of her bow. O king! Thereafter, the loin of the goddess also began to roar loudly. The Ambika increased the sound by ringing the bell. The twang of the bow, the roar of the loin and the sound of the bell resounded in all directions. With that terrifying sound, Kali enlarged her fierce face even more and thus became victorious. Hearing that tumultuous sound, the armies of demons came from all sides and surrounded Chandika Devi, the loin and Kali Devi in anger. King, in the meantime, for the destruction of the demons and the rise of the gods, the powers of the gods like Brahma, Shiva, Kartike, Vishnu and Indra, who were endowed with great valor and strength, came out of their bodies and went to Chandika Devi in their own form. Whatever the form, attire and vehicle of a god, exactly in the same way, his power came to fight the demons, equipped with the means. First of all, the power of Brahmaji adorned with Akshas Sutra and Kamandalu, sitting on a swan mounted plane appeared who is called brahmani the power of mahadev ji mounted on the bull reached there holding the great trident in his hands wearing mahanag's bangle adorned with the moon line on his head jagdambika the form of shakti of kartike ji assumed his form and came to fight with the demons mounted on the best peacock with power in her hand Similarly, the power of Lord Vishnu, seated on Garud, came there with conch, disc, mace, bow, and sword in his, in his hands. The power of Sri Hariki, who took the form of a unique Yajna Varaha, was also present there in the form of Varaha, horse body. 
Narsimhi Shakti also came there in a body like that of Narsimha. The stars in the sky would scatter due to the jerk of the hair on his neck. Similarly, Indra's power came sitting on the elephant Aravad, holding the thunderbolt in its hand. It too had a thousand eyes. It had the same form as Indra. Thereafter, surrounded by those divine powers, Mahadev ji said to Chandika, "To please me, you kill these demons soon." Then a very terrifying and extremely fierce Chandika Shakti appeared from the body of the goddess, which was making sounds like hundreds of jackals. That undefeated. Goddess said to Mahadev ji with smoky hair, "Lord, you go as a messenger to Shumbh Nishum and tell those two very proud demons, Shumbh and Nishum, along with them, give this message to the demons who are also present there for the war. Demons, if you want to survive, then return to the nether world. May Indra get the kingdom of the three worlds, and may the gods enjoy the share of the sacrifice. If you desire war in the pride of your strength, then come. May my yoginis." be satiated with your raw flesh since that goddess had appointed lord shiva as a messenger she became famous in the world by the name of shiv duti those great demons also became very angry on hearing the words of the goddess from the mouth of lord shiva and proceeded towards the place where katyayani was sitting thereafter those demons filled with resentment started showering weapons like arrows shakti and drishti on the goddess then the goddess in a playful manner twanged her bow with the long arrows shot from it cut down the arrows spears maces and axes shot by the demons then kali went ahead of them and began to pierce the enemies with her spear and roamed the battlefield crushing them with her khatwang brahmani too by sprinkling the water from her kamandalu on whichever side she ran destroyed the energy and valor of the enemies maheshwari with her trident Vishnuvi, with her discus and the shakti of Kumar Kartike, filled with great anger, began to kill the demons. Pierced by the thunderbolt of Indra Shakti, hundreds of demons and monsters fell asleep on the earth, flowing streams of blood. Varahi Shakti destroyed many with the blows of her snout, pierced the chests of many with the front part of her molars, and many demons fell down after being torn apart by the blows of her discus. Narsimhi also started roaming in the battlefield. tearing apart other de- great demons with her nails and devouring them and making the directions and the sky resound with her roar many demons extremely frightened by the loud laughter of shivduti fell on the earth and upon falling shivduti devoured them at that time seeing the angry matri ganas killing the big demons with various methods the demon army fled Seeing the demons fleeing from the battle, afflicted by the Matri Ganas, a great demon named Raktabij, filled with anger, came to fight. Whenever a drop of blood fl- fell from his body on the earth, another great demon as powerful as him was born on the earth. The great demon Raktabij, taking a mace in his hand, started fighting with Indra Shakti. The Indri struck Raktabij with her thunderbolt. When he was wounded by the thunderbolt, a lot of blood oozed out from his body, and from it, warriors with similar looks and valor as him started being born. As many drops of blood fell from his body, as many men were born. All of them were as virile, strong, and valiant as Raktabij. Those men born from blood also started fighting fear fiercely with the mothers there, using very dreadful weapons. when his head was wounded by the thunderbolt blood started flowing and thousands of men were born from it in the battle vishnuvi struck raktabij with his discus and indri struck the demon commander with his mace when vishnuvi struck him struck him with her discus the blood that flowed from his body and from that thousands of great demons of his size appeared the entire universe was pervaded by them kumari struck the great demon raktabij with her power Varahi with his with her sword and Maheshwari with her trident the that great demon Raktabij filled with anger attacked all the mother powers separately with his mace the stream of blood that fell on the earth from his body after being wounded many times with spears and tridents surely gave birth to hundreds of demons in this way the entire universe was pervaded by the demons born from the blood of that great demon this frightened the gods a lot seeing the gods sad chandika quickly said to kali 
चामुंडे ओपन योर माउथ इवन मोर एंड ईट अप द ड्रॉप्स ऑफ ब्लड फॉलोइंग फ्रॉम माई वेपन्स एंड द ग्रेट डेमोज बॉन्ड फ्रॉम दैम विद योर ईगर माउथ दस कीप रोमिंग इन द बैटल ग्राउंड डिवरिंग द ग्रेट डेमोज बॉन्ड फ्रॉम ब्लड बाई डूइंग सो वेन ऑल द ब्लड ऑफ द डेमोन विल बी ड्रेन्ड ही हिमसेल्फ विल ऑल्सो बी डिस्ट्रॉयड वेन यू डेवर दोज फियर्स डेमोज सो नो न्यू डेमोज विल बी बॉन्ड हैविंग सेट दिस टू काली गॉडस चंडिका स्ट्रक रक्त बीज विद अ स्पियर एंड काली टुक हिज ब्लड इन एंड इट काली टुक हिज ब्लड इन हर माउथ देन ही अटैक्ड चंडिका विद अ मेस बट दैट ब्लो ऑफ द मेस डिड नॉट कॉज द गॉडस एनी पेन अ लॉट ऑफ ब्लड फेल फ्रॉम द बाउंडेड बॉडी ऑफ रक्त बीज बट एज सून एज ही फेल चामुंडा टुक हिम इन हर माउथ शी डेवर्ड ऑल द ग्रेट डेमोज दैट वर बॉर्न इन कालीज माउथ ड्यू टू द फॉलोइंग ऑफ ब्लड एंड शी ऑल्सो ड्रैंक रक्त बीज ब्लड देर आफ्टर द गॉडस किल्ड रक्त बीज हुज ब्लड हैड बीन ड्रंक बाय चामुंडा विद थंडर बोर्ड्स एरोज स्वॉर्ड्स एंड स्पीयर्स ओ किंग दस वाउंडेड बाय द बैरेज ऑफ वेपन्स एंड ब्लडलेस द ग्रेट डेमोन रक्त बीज फेल ऑन अर्थ ओ लॉर्ड ऑफ मैन दिस गेव द गॉड्स इमेंस जॉय एंड द मात्री गन्स इंटॉक्सिकेटेड बाय ड्रिंकिंग द ब्लड ऑफ दोज डेमोन्स बिगैन टू डांस Thus, in the Devi Mahatma, under the story of Savanik Manvantar in Sri Markande Puran, the eighth chapter named Rakt Bij Vad is completed. All those who are listening, please say with me, Jai Mata Di, Jai Mata Di, Jai Mata Di. Om Sri Ganesha Namaha, Jai Durga Ma, Jai Mata Di. The ninth chapter of Durga Saptashati is based on the slaying of Nishumb. Now more Adhyaya, killing of Nishumb. meditation i constantly take refuge in the form of ardhanarishwar his color is like that of bandhu kapushp and gold mixed with reddish yellow he holds beautiful rosary noose gourd and varad mudra in his arms the half moon is his ornament and he is adorned with three eyes the king said o oh lord you have told me this wonderful significance of the divine character related to the killing of rakt bij Now I want to hear what Shumb and Nishumb did after Rakt Bij was killed in great anger. The sage said, "King, when Rakt Bij and other demons were killed in the war, the anger of Shumb and Nishumb knew no bounds. Seeing his huge army being killed, Nishumb, filled with anger, ran towards the goddess. He was accompanied by the main army of the demons. In front of him, behind him, and on his sides were big demons who came to kill the goddess, biting their lips in anger." the mighty shumb also after fighting with the mothers reached there with his army to kill chandika in anger then a fierce battle between shumb and nishumb and the goddess began both the demons were raining arrows like clouds chandika instantly cut off the arrows shot by both of them with her own arrows and showered a shower of weapons on the limbs of both the demon kings nishumb took a sharp sword and a shining shield and attacked the head of the loin the best vehicle of the goddess on her vehicle being hit the goddess instantly cut off nishumb's best sword with an arrow called kshurpra and also broke his shield which had eight moons embedded in it into pieces on the cutting of the shield and sword the demon used his shakti but when he came in front the goddess broke him into two pieces with her discus now nishumb was burning with anger and the demon raised a spear to kill the goddess but when he came close the goddess smashed him with her punch and crushed him to pieces then he swung his mace at chandi but that too was cut by the goddess trident and reduced to ashes thereafter seeing the demon king nishumb approaching with an axe in his hand the goddess wounded him with a hail of arrows and put him to sleep on the ground at the fall of his terrifying valiant brother nishumb shumb became very angry and advanced forward to kill ambika sitting on the chariot itself he covered the entire sky with his eight large and matchless arms adorned with excellent weapons and looked wonderful seeing him approach the goddess blew her conch and also made a very dreadful sound with the string of her bow at the same time she filled all directions with the sound of her bell which destroyed the brilliance of all the demon soldiers Thereafter the lion too with his roar which would make the pride of even the biggest elephants elephants vanish filled the sky earth and all the 10 directions with noise then kali jumped into the sky and struck the earth with both her hands this produced such a terrifying sound that all the earlier sounds became silent
देर आफ्टर द मैसेंजर ऑफ शिवा लॉफ्ड ऑमिनसली फॉर द डेमोन्स हियरिंग दीज साउंड्स ऑल द डेमोन्स ट्रेम्बल्ड बट शुम्भ बिकेम वेरी एंग्री एट दैट टाइम वेन द गॉड एज पॉइंटेड एट शुम्भ एंड सेड ओ ईवल साउल स्टैंड स्टिल स्टैंड स्टिल द गॉड स्टैंडिंग इन द स्काई एक्सक्लेम्ड विक्ट्री टू यू विक्ट्री टू यू शुम्भ केम देयर एंड फायर अ वेरी टेरिफाइंग शक्ति एनर्जी फिल्ड विद फ्लेम्स द गॉड एज पुस्ड अवे दैट शक्ति विच वॉज कमिंग लाइक अ फ्यूरी माउंटेन विद अ ह्यूज स्टिक एट दैट टाइम द थ्री वर्ल्ड रिसाउंडेड विद द रोर ऑफ शुम्भ ओ किंग इट्स एको प्रोड्यूस्ड अ टेरिबल साउंड लाइक थंडर बोल्ट विच ओवर पावर्ड ऑल अदर साउंड द एरोज शॉर्ट बाय शुम्भ वर ब्रोकन इन टू हंड्रेड एंड थाउजेंड्स ऑफ पीसीज बाय देवी एंड द एरोज शॉर्ट बाय देवी वर ब्रोकन बाय शुम्भ विद हिज फियर्स एरोज दैन चंडिका फिल्ड विद एंगर स्ट्रक शुम्भ विद अ ट्रिडेंट ही फेल अनकॉन्शियस ऑन द अर्थ ड्यू टू द ब्लो इन द मीन वाइल निशुम्भ रीगेंड अन रीगेंड कॉन्शियसनेस एंड टेकिंग अप हिज बो इन हिज हैंड ही वाउंडेड द गॉडेस Kali and the loin with his arrows. Then the demon king made ten thousand arms and covered Chandika with his discus. Then goddess Durga, who destroys insurmountable pain, became angry and cut down those discus and arrows with her arrows. Seeing this, Nishumb, along with the army of demons, ran with great speed with his mace in his hand to kill Chandika. As soon as he came, Chandi quickly cut off his mace with her sharp sword. Then she took the spear in her hand. Seeing Nishumb, the tormentor of the gods, coming with a spear in his hand, Chandika, moving her spear with great force, pierced his chest. After being pierced by the spear, another mighty and valiant man came out of his chest, saying, "Stand, stand." On hearing the words of the emerging man the goddess laughed out loud and cut off his head with her sword then he fell on the earth thereafter the loin started eating the necks of the demons by crushing them with its teeth it was very terrifying scene on the other hand kali and shivduti also started devouring other demons many great demons were destroyed after being pierced by the power of the virgin many fled away after being weakened by the water infused with the mantras of brahmani Many demons were torn to pieces by Maheshwari's trident and fell down. Many were crushed to death on the earth after being struck by Varahi's snout. Vaishnavi also cut the demons into pieces with her discus. Many lost their lives due to the th- thunderbolt that dropped from Indri's hand. Some demons were destroyed, some fled from that great war, and many became prey to Kali, Shivduti, and Loin. Thus in the story of Savarnik Manvantar in Shri Markande Puran the ninth chapter named Nishumbavad in Devi Mahatmay is completed all those who are listening please say with me Jai Mata Di Jai Mata Di Jai Mata Di Om Shri Ganeshay Namaha Jai Mata Di Jai Durga Ma the 10th chapter of Durga Saptashati is based on the slaying of Shumbh Dashamo Adhyaya Shumbavad meditation i contemplate in my heart the goddess kameshwari the incarnation of shiva who wears a half moon on her forehead she is beautiful like heated gold the sun the moon and the fire these three and her eyes and she holds a bow and arrow and a hook a noose and a spear in her beautiful hands the sage says o king seeing his dear brother nishum killed and knowing that the entire army was being destroyed shum became angry and said wicked durga do not show false pride in the pride of your strength you are acting very proud but you fight taking the support of the strength of other women the goddess said o oh, wicked one i am alone who else is there in this world except me see these are my own manifestations hence they are entering me thereafter all the goddesses like brahmani etc merged in the body of ambika devi at that time only ambika devi remained the goddess said i had appeared here in many forms with my divine power i have gathered all those forms now i am standing alone in the battle you also stand still the sage says thereafter a fierce battle broke out between the goddess and shumbh in front of all the gods and demons Due to the shower of arrows and the attack of sharp weapons and dreadful arms the battle between the two appeared very terrifying to everyone at that time hundreds of divine weapons shot by goddess ambika were cut by demon king shumbh with their 
deterrent weapons similarly whatever divine weapons shumbh shot the goddess destroyed them playfully by uttering a terrifying roar then that demon covered the goddess with hundreds of arrows seeing this the goddess filled with anger also shot an arrow and cut off his bow after the bow was cut the demon king again took the shakti in his hand but the goddess cut off the shakti in in his hand with her discus thereafter shumb the lord of demons attacked the goddess with a shield and a and sword shining with a hundred moons as soon as he arrived chandika immediately cut off his shield and sword which were as bright as the rays of the sun with sharp arrows shot from her bow then the demon's horse and charioteer were killed his bow had already been cut now he took up his dreadful club in his hand ready to kill ambika seeing him coming the goddess cut off his club with her sharp arrows despite this the demon raised his fist and rushed towards the goddess with great force the demon king punched the goddess in the chest then the goddess slapped him on the chest after being slapped by the goddess the demon king shumb fell on the earth but suddenly he stood up again as before then he jumped up and took the goddess up and stood in the sky then chandika started fighting with shumb in the sky also without any support at that time the demon and chandika started fighting with each other in the sky their battle astonished the siddhas and sages then ambika after fighting with shumb for a long time lifted head lifted him up whirled him around and threw him on the earth after being thrown down on the earth the evil souled demon ran again ran towards chandika with great speed to kill her then seeing shumb the king of all demons coming towards her the goddess pierced his chest with her trident and threw him on the earth on being wounded by the edge of the goddess trident his soul departed and he fell on the ground shaking the entire earth including the oceans islands and mountains thereafter after the slaying of the evil soul demon the entire world became happy and healthy and the sky appeared clear the clouds and meteor showers that were earlier indicative of havoc all became silent and after the demon was killed even the rivers started flowing in their proper path at that time after shumb's death the hearts of all the gods were filled with joy and the gandharvas started singing sweet songs the other gandharvas started playing musical instruments and the apsaras started dancing the holy wind started blowing the radiance of the sun became excellent the extinguished fire of the fireplace started rekindling itself and the terrifying sounds from all directions became silent thus in the story of the savarnik manvantar in the shri markande puran the 10th chapter named shumbhavad in the devi mahatmay is completed all those who are listening please say with me jai mata di jai mata di jai mata di ओम श्री गणेशाय नम जय दुर्गा माँ जय माता दी द इलेवेंथ चैप्टर ऑफ दुर्गा सप्तशती इज बेस्ड ऑन हिम टू नारायणी एकादशो अध्याय प्रेज ऑफ द गॉडेस बाय द गॉड्स एंड बून टू द गॉड्स बाय द गॉडेस मेडिटेशन आई मेडिटेट ऑन गॉडेस भुवनेश्वरी द रेडियंस ऑफ हर लिम्स इज लाइक द मॉर्निंग सन एंड देर इज अ क्राउन ऑफ द मून ऑन हर हैड शी हैज थ्री आईज A smile is visible on her face and the varad ankush paash and abhimudra are beautiful in her hands the sage says when the great demon shumbh was killed by the goddess the gods like indra started praising goddess katyayini by bringing agni in front of them at that time their faces were glowing due to the fulfillment of their wishes and the directions were also illuminated by their light the god said goddess who removes the pain of those who surrender be pleased with us mother of the entire universe be pleased vishveshwari protect the universe devi you are the presiding deity of the animate and inanimate universe you are the only support of this universe because you reside in the form of the earth devi your prowess is incomparable you reside in the form of water and satisfy the entire universe you are the vaishnavi shakti endowed with infinite power you are the cause of this universe and the ultimate illusion 
Devi, you have enchanted the entire universe. When you are pleased, you make people attain salvation on this earth. Devi, all the knowledge is your different forms. All the women in the universe are your images. Jagdamba, you alone have pervaded this universe. What praise can be offered to you? You are beyond the things to be praised and beyond speech. When you are omnipresent goddess who grants heaven and salvation, then you were praised in this form. What could be better than this to praise you? Narayani Devi, who resides in everyone's heart intelligently and who bestows heaven and salvation. Greetings to you. Narayani, who leads to the result, change of state, gradually through the form of art, wood, etc., and is capable of bringing an end to the world. Greetings to you. Narayani, you are the auspicious one who bestows all kinds of blessings. May Shiva be the benefactor. She is the one who fulfills all the efforts, surrenders herself to the soul, has three eyes and is fair. Greetings to you. You are the Shakti Bhut of creation, sustenance and destruction, the eternal goddess, the basis of virtues and the one with all qualities. Narayani, greetings to you. Narayani Devi, who is engaged in protecting the poor and suffering people who take refuge in her and relieves everyone's pain. Greetings to you. Narayani, you assume the form of Brahmani and sit on a plane harnessed by swines and keep sprinkling water mixed with Kusha. Greetings to you. Narayani Devi, in the form of Maheshwari, who holds a trident, moon and snake and sits on the back of the great Taurus. Greetings to you. Sinless Narayani, in the form of a virgin, who lives surrounded by peacocks and cocks and possesses superpowers. Greetings to you. Vaishnavi Shakti Rupa Narayani, who wields excellent weapons in the form of conch, disc, mace and bow and arrow. You be happy. Greetings to you. Kalyan Mai Narayani, the goddess of good fortune, carrying the, carrying the terrible Mahachakra in her hands and lifting the earth on her teeth. Salutations to you. Narayani, who is fiercely engaged in killing, these, killing the demons in the form of a loin and who is engaged in the protection of Tribhuvan. Greetings to you. Narayani Devi in the form of Indra Shakti, who wears a crown on her head and a Mahavajra in her hand, who looks radiant because of her thousand eyes and who kidnaps the life of Vrittasur. Greetings to you. Narayani, who destroys the huge army of demons in the form of Shivduti, who assumes a terrible form and makes a terrible roar. Greetings to you. Mund Mardini Chamunda Rup Narayani, adorned with Mund Mala, with a monstrous face because of the beards. Greetings to you. Lakshmi, Lajja, Mahavidya, Shraddha, Pushti, Swadha, Dhruva, Maharatri and Mahavidya Rupa Narayani. Greetings to you. Medha, Saraswati, Var, Best, Bhuti, Ashwarya form, Babhravi, Brown colored or Parvati, Tamsi, Mahakali, Niyata, Restraint and Isha, Lord of all. Rupini Narayani. Greetings to you. Goddess Durga, who is omnipresent, omniscient and endowed with all types of powers, protect us from all fears. Greetings to you. Katyayani, may this gentle mouth of yours adorned with three lochans protect us from all kinds of fears. Greetings to you. Bhadrakali, may your trident which appears monstrous due to flames is extremely fierce and is the destroyer of all demons. Save us from fear. Greetings to you. Goddess, May your bell, which pervades the entire universe with its sound and destroys the brilliance of demons, protect us from sins, just as a mother protects her sons from evil deeds. Chandika, the sword adorned in your hand, is tainted with blood and fat of demons. May you bless us. We salute you. Devi, when you are pleased, you destroy all diseases and when you are angry, you destroy all the desired desires. Those who have taken refuge in you, no calamity falls on them. Those who seek your refuge become those who give refuge to others. Goddess Ambika, you have divided your form into many parts and taken various forms to kill these great demons who were traitors to religion. Who else is mentioned in the scriptures that reveal knowledge and in the first words of Vedas except you? 
and who else other than you is the power that is constantly misleading this world in the pit of attachment which is full of darkness of ignorance wherever there are demons wherever there are snakes with deadly poison wherever there are enemies wherever there is an army of robbers and wherever there is a forest fire and even in the middle of the ocean you protect the world by staying with us vishweshwari you protect the world you are the form of the world hence you hold the entire world you are also worshipable to lord vishnu vishwanath those who bow their heads in front of you with devotion they give shelter to the entire world devi be pleased just as you have quickly protected us by killing the demons at this time in the same way always protect us from the fear of enemies destroy the sins of the entire world and quickly remove the big troubles like epidemics etc which are the result of roids and sins devi who removes the pain of the world we are lying at your feet be pleased with us o parmeshwari worshipable by the residents of the three worlds give blessings to all the people the goddess said o gods i am ready to grant you a boon ask for a boon you desire i will certainly grant you that boon which will be beneficial for the world the god said o sarveshwari you should likewise calm down all the obstacles of the three worlds and keep on destroying our enemies the goddess said o gods in the 28th yug of the vaivaswat manvantar two great two more great demons named shumbh and nishumbh will be born then i will be born in the house of the nandgop from the womb of his wife jashoda and will go and live in vindhyachal and destroy the above mentioned two demons then taking incarnation on the earth in a very fearsome form i will kill the demon named vaprachit when i devour those terrifying demons my teeth will become red like pomegranate flowers then the gods in heaven and humans in the mortal world will always praise me and call me rakta dantika then when the rains will stop for a hundred years and there will be scarcity of water on earth at that time when the when the sages will praise me i will appear on earth in the form of ayonija and i will look at the sages with a hundred eyes therefore people will sing my praises by the name of shatakshi o gods at that time i will nourish the whole world with the vegetables produced from my body till the rain does not come those vegetables will protect everyone's life due to doing this i will be famous on earth by the name of shakambari in the same incarnation i will also kill the great demon named durgam due to this my name will become famous as durga devi then when i assume the form of bhim and devour the demons living on the himalayas to protect the sages all the sages will bow down in devotion and praise me then my name will become famous as bhima devi when the demon named arun will create a great disturbance in the three worlds then for the benefit of the three worlds i will assume the form of innumerable six legged bumbly bees and kill that great demon at that time everyone will praise me everywhere in the form of bhramri in this way whenever a demonic obstacle will appear in the world i will take incarnation and kill the enemies thus in the devi mahatma under the story of the savarnik manvantar in the shri markande puran the 11th chapter named devi stuti is completed all those who are listening please say with me jay mata di jay mata di jay mata di ओम श्री गणेशाय नम जय माता दी जय माँ दुर्गा द ट्वेल्थ चैप्टर ऑफ दुर्गा सप्तशती इज बेस्ड ऑन योलॉजी ऑफ द मेरिट्स द्वादशो अध्याय सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ रिसाइटिंग देवी चरित्रास मेडिटेशन आई मेडिटेट ऑन द थ्री आइड गॉड एस दुर्गा द रेडियंस ऑफ अर लिम्स इज लाइक लाइटनिंग शी अपियर्स फियर्स सिटिंग ऑन द शोल्डर ऑफ अ लॉइन मेनी गर्ल्स आर स्टैंडिंग इन हर सर्विस विद स्वॉर्ड एंड शील्ड इन देयर हैंड्स she holds a discus mace sword shield arrow bow nose and index finger in her hands her form is fiery and she wears a moon shaped crown on her forehead the goddess said o gods whoever with a concentrated mind will daily praise me with these hymns i will definitely remove all his obstacles whoever will recite the stories of the destruction of madhu katab the killing of mahishasur and the killing of shumbh and nishumb and on ashtami chaturdashi and navmi those who listen to my great glory with devotion with a concentrated mind vicious deeds will not be able to touch them they will not face any sins they will never face poverty in their homes and they will never have to suffer the pain of separation from their loved ones not only this 
they will never fear the enemy robbers king weapons fire or even a mass of water therefore everyone should always read and listen to my greatness with a concentrated mind it is extremely beneficial my greatness quenches all the troubles caused by epidemics and all the three types of disturbances including spiritual ones i never leave the place in which my greatness is recited daily according to the prescribed method in my temple i always remain present there on the occasions of sacrifice worship fire and festivals my character should be read and heard completely by doing so whatever sacrifice worship or fire etc a person performs for me whether knowing the method or not i will accept it with great pleasure on the occasion of the annual grand worship performed in the autumn season the person the person who listens to my greatness with devotion will be freed from all obstacles and will be blessed with wealth grain and sons by my grace there is no doubt about this by listening to my greatness the beautiful stories of my appearance and my valor in war a person becomes fearless the enemies of those who listen to my greatness are destroyed they attain welfare and their family remains happy one should listen to my glory while doing all the peace rituals when one sees bad dreams and when one is suffering from terrible sufferings caused by planets all the obstacles and terrible sufferings caused by planets are pacified by this and the nightmares seen by men are transformed into auspicious dreams this glory is pacifying for children affected by the malefic planets and when there is a rift in a group of men it helps in making them friends this glory destroys the power of all the wicked people by merely reciting it demons ghosts and evil spirits are destroyed all this glory of mine helps one to attain my proximity the amount of pleasure i get by worshiping me for a year by offering animals flowers offerings incense lamps perfumes etc by feeding the brahmins by performing homas by performing abhishekam every day by offering various types of other food items and by giving donations etc is the same pleasure i get by just listening to this excellent story of mine once this greatness on hearing it removes sins and grants health the recitation of my appearance protects one from all ghosts and war related story destroys the evil demons by listening to this men are not afraid of enemies O oh gods the praises of me that you and the brahm rishis have sung and the praises of brahma ji all of them give auspicious wisdom when caught in a forest on a lonely road or surrounded by forest fire when trapped by robbers in a deserted place or captured by enemies or when chased by lions tigers or wild elephants in the jungle when taken to a place of slaughter or captivity by the order of an enraged king or when the boat is tottering in a storm after boarding a boat in the ocean when attacked by weapons in a fierce battle or when afflicted with pain or more importantly when all dreadful obstacles are encountered he who remembers my character becomes free from all troubles due to my influence ferocious animals like lions are destroyed and robbers and enemies also run away from a person who remembers my character rishi says saying this goddess chandika who had great valor disappeared in front of all the gods then all the gods also become fearless of being killed by the enemies and started following their respective rites while enjoying the yagya portion like before the remaining demons went to the underworld when shumb the great enemy of god and the mighty nishumb who was the destroyer of the world and was killed by the goddess in the battle rajan in this way bhagwati ambika devi despite being daily appears again and again and protects the world it is she who fascinates this world she is the one who gives birth to the world and she is the one who is satisfied with prayer and bestows science and prosperity rajan that mahakali who assumed the form of epidemic at the time of mahapralay is present in this entire universe it is she who causes epi- epidemics from time to time and she herself despite being unborn appears in the form of creation it is the eternal goddess who protects all living beings according to the time at the time of the rise of the human beings she resides in the form of lakshmi in the house and grants progress and she in times of scarcity she becomes the cause of destruction by becoming poverty when she is worshiped with flowers incense and perfumes etc and is praised she bestows wealth sons religious wisdom and a good fortune in this manner in the story of the savarnik manvantar in the shri markande puran 
द ट्वेल्थ चैप्टर नेम्ड फल स्तुति इज कम्प्लीटेड ऑल दोज हु आर लिसनिंग प्लीज से विद मी जय माता दी जय माता दी जय माता दी ओम श्री गणेशाय नमः जय माँ दुर्गा जय माता दी द थर्टींथ चैप्टर ऑफ दुर्गा सप्तशती इज बेस्ड ऑन द बेस्टोइंग ऑफ बूंस टू सूरत एंड वैश्य त्रयोदशो अध्याय गॉडेस बून टू सूरत एंड वैश्य मेडिटेशन आई मेडिटेट ऑन दैट गॉडेस शिवा हु हैज़ द रेडियंस लाइक द सनराइज हु हैज़ फोर आर्म्स एंड थ्री आईज एंड हु होल्ड्स इन हर हैंड्स द नूज गोड बून एंड द मुद्रा ऑफ फियरलेसनेस द सेज सेज O king does i have described to you the excellent glory of the goddess such is the power of the goddess who holds this universe she alone produces knowledge it is by that goddess who is the form of the illusion of lord vishnu that you the vaishyas and the other prudent people are bewildered have been bewildered and will be bewildered in future too maharaj you should seek refuge in that very goddess upon worship she alone grants men enjoyment heaven and salvation markande says krostuki ji on hearing these words of medha muni king surat bowed down to that great sage who was observing a great fast he had become very sad due to extreme attachment and the abduction of the kingdom mahamuni therefore being detached the king and the vaishya immediately went for penance and started performing penance by staying on the banks of the river to have the darshan of jagdamba The Vaishyas started performing penance by reciting the excellent Devi Sukt. Both of them made a clay idol of the goddess on the bank of the river and started worshiping her by offering flowers, incense, and havans, etc. First, they gradually reduced their food intake. Then, by remaining absolute, absolutely without food, they started thinking about the goddess with concentration, keeping their mind focused on her. Both of them continued to worship with restraint for three years, offering sacrifices with the blood of their bodies. Pleased with this, Goddess Chandika, who sustains the world, appeared before me and said, "The Goddess said, 'O King, and Vaishyas, who bring joy to their clan, ask me for whatever you desire. I am satisfied, so I will give you everything.'" Markande says. Then the king asked for a kingdom that would not be destroyed in the next birth and asked. for the boon that in this birth also he would destroy the army of enemies by force and regain his kingdom the vaishya's mind had become sad and detached from the world and he was very intelligent so at that time he asked for the knowledge that would destroy attachment in the form of attachment and ego the goddess said king in a few days you will kill your enemies and regain your kingdom now your kingdom will remain stable there then after death you will be born from the part of lord vivaswan son and will be famous on this earth by the name of savarni manu o vaishya i give you the boon you desired from me you will get knowledge for salvation markande ji says after giving the desired boons to both of them and listening to her praise with devotion by them goddess ambika immediately disappeared in this way after getting the boon from the goddess surat the best among the kshatriyas will be born from the sun and will be manu named savarni in this way the 13th chapter named surat and boon to vaishya in devi mahatmaya under the story of savarnik manvantar in shri markande puran is completed all those who are listening please say with me jai mata di jai mata di jai mata di jai ganesh ji jai ganesh ji jai ganesh ji जय माता दी जय माता दी जय माता दी